What's going on, everyone? We are back and we are talking about what could be, I think, Apple's best overall laptop to date. This is the 2019 MacBook Pro 13 inch. Now, um, if you have seen our previous review on the 2018 MacBook Air, I mean, thank you guys very much for the comments and the support on that. A lot of you were asking, what is a good, let's say, laptop for college students or kind of just your basic work? And a lot of questions I got on that review were, you know, you guys were sort of like kind of on that edge of actually going to a pro, but the price point was obviously much higher. Now, when Apple released this one, they brought it to a price point that really kind of makes you go, do I go for the Air anymore? Or do I just kind of go for the Pro? Because it's only a few hundred dollars more when you look at them between the two, and this offers quite a bit more. But after getting uh, to using it for the past few weeks, I have to say that it's impressed me. And for me, I do what most everyone does. I go on YouTube, I watch Netflix, I browse the web, I do some light word documentation, uh, invoices, stuff like that. But I do a lot of photo editing, Lightroom, Photoshop, some Capture One, because I do a lot of reviews for cameras. Now you've got the 1.4 gigahertz quad core i5 eighth generation processor on there. You've got the Intel Iris Plus graphics 645 card, 256 gigabytes of storage on the version I have. Now it starts off at 128, it goes up to two, it can go up to, I think, to two two terabytes if you want to add it up. Eight gigabytes of RAM, two Thunderbolt 3 ports, and uh, that's pretty much it. So we're gonna talk through this from the design to the internals, and then I'm gonna to get to overall what I think, what I like, and what I don't like about it. Now, the design. This is just like every MacBook Pro that's been on the market for the past few years. But I will say, if you haven't picked up one in a while, and you've been looking at Windows laptops, and you're thinking, hey, maybe I'll try the MacBook Pro 13 inch, you're gonna really appreciate the build quality. Even after a few years, it just screams premium. I mean, everything feels solid to the touch. It's lightweight, it's streamlined, it's beautiful. Even if Apple doesn't update this, and the rumor has that they're gonna update the MacBook Pro line, I don't know if it will happen or not, but if they do, this is still gonna be great for you for the next couple of years. Moving on to the display, it's 13 inches of retina display, true tone display. It's a great looking display. Now, personally, I would like it to be a little bit more brighter, but I mean, Apple sometimes comes up with updates that enhances those things. They did it with the MacBook Air, but for the most part for daily usage, it's fine. Moving down, we have the touch bar now on the MacBook Pro 13 inch, and the touch bar is a little bit controversial. Some people like it, some people don't. They want the physical buttons there, but I've gotten used to not having those function keys there, and I actually like it, and it just kind of streamlines the look of the MacBook Pro to me, and it works. I mean, it's also got the secure touch ID right there for me, so I appreciate that. It makes logging in a lot easier, especially if I wanna pay for apps or pay for things, I can use the touch ID. Now we move on to the keyboard. The keyboard. And a lot of you out there, I mean, you're asking me questions on the MacBook Air keyboard, what's this like? They're similar in a lot of ways. Look, you use what you have in front of you. Now, if I have other keyboards and I'm doing a keyboard comparison, I might want something with a little bit more clickiness, a little bit more travel, but I did get used to this keyboard. Um, is it my favorite? Not my favorite keyboard, but it does the job and I can type and I don't make that many mistakes, but I'm not a professional typist, so I'm still on a, like a hybrid of a pigeon typer and you know using a few more fingers, So, but it does the job for me. Um, speakers wise, audio quality sounds good. Is it as good as the better MacBook Pros out there? Not quite, but it does the job and it's better than a lot of Windows laptops I've tried out there. So no complaints on that as well. But we got to move down to one of the parts that's my favorite of most Apple laptops or any laptops out there is the trackpad that Apple has on the MacBook Air or the MacBook Pros. They are fantastic. Actually, they spoil you. So when I go and I test other laptops that aren't Apple, I get very frustrated by the trackpads because they're not as responsive as this. It's large, it feels really good, it's very clicky. It's the best. It's one of the best things Apple does on their laptops is the trackpad in my personal opinion. Now we move on to the sides. We've got Thunderbolt 3 ports. We've only got two and a headphone jack on the right side, which on your left side that you're watching this video here. Um, for a pro device, I wish it was more than two Thunderbolt 3 ports. They could do three, you know, because if, if I'm at a desk or I'm in a situation where I want to charge my MacBook Pro on the right side here, I can't. I got to wrap the cord around here. Also, if I have any peripherals here, I got to plug in, it starts getting really messy on my left-hand side. So I'd like to, it would have been nice to have it more balanced. Having said that though, there are adapters that you can buy the plug in to give you much more usability. But I'm talking about the MacBook Pro out of the box. Uh, besides that, battery life. Battery life is good. 
it works well. I mean, I'm getting a good solid seven to eight hours out of this, and if I really want to sip juice and bring down the bright, uh, brightness down, I can get a good 10 to 11 hours out of this. For, I mean, of course, this depends on what I'm using it for. Now, if I'm doing Photoshop and Lightroom, yeah, it's going to take a lot more juice. But for daily usage, it works really, really well. I would not have a problem taking this with me on a trip, on a plane ride, watching some movies. You're going to get through probably a trip from Singapore to Europe without an issue. Going to America, bring your charger. <laughs> but that's with any laptop. Okay. Anyway, talking about Photoshop for a moment. Now, Photoshop and Lightroom are more processor intensive applications. So, graphics card doesn't mean as much, but you, I mean, you find the i5 works fine for you. It's not gonna be as fast as the i7 or i9, but I don't see it stuttering or causing me any issues. And I'm editing everything from high resolving uh, images from let's say a one gigabyte image from a high resolution photo I did with the uh, Panasonic S1R to medium format images to all those things. And it does relatively well. However, there's a caveat to this. And this is one of the problems I have with the MacBook Pro is the RAM. The base configuration is eight gigabytes of RAM with the Pro. Personally, I feel that is too low. But once you get into productivity apps, eight gigabytes nowadays is too low. Our phones have more than eight gigabytes of RAM. Okay, not the iPhone, of course, but other phones out there. So I would think though that Apple could start off as a base of 16 gigabytes and then spec it up to 32 gigabytes. I mean, not everybody will use it, but for those of us who want to push our 13 inch MacBook Pros a little bit further out there, and get a little bit more, let's say, longevity out of it, 16 gigabytes is where you wanna be. So if you wanna spec this up, that's the thing you should look at first before anything else. This is gonna be the laptop for a lot of you out there. Um, if you're going back to school, yeah, you're gonna be doing some productivity, some graphic design. This laptop is for the majority of people out there. For those few who are gonna be doing high intensive graphics, uh, you're gonna to wanna to go step it up. And if you're in the gaming, you're gonna to wanna to step it up. I kind of wonder where the air is going to fit into all this, to be honest with you. Because for a few hundred dollars more, you get quite a bit more computer. Now, the air is beautiful, and I have it right here with me. It's a beautiful design, and we reviewed this previously, and we'll put a link in our description below. And I love, I love this laptop. But what I'm able to do with this MacBook Pro, I kind of just not really touching the air anymore. So. Yeah, this is the laptop for the majority of people out there, and I applaud Apple for putting a lot into a price point like this. I'm not gonna compare this with other Windows laptops because when you buy it into a MacBook Pro or a MacBook Air, any MacBook for that matter, you're getting into an ecosystem. And if you're into that Apple ecosystem, you're looking for a good laptop, and you're a student, and you wanna get a good discount, because I think they have student discounts right now on these, check this out, you won't be disappointed. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the MacBook Pro 2019 13 inch. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Like always, don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube, smash that subscribe button, follow us on Facebook. Until the next one, take care.